Crypto gaming projects are going bananas. 5, 10, sometimes up to 20x gains here in a very, very short amount of time. And unfortunately, no one could have predicted this. No one on earth could have told you that this was coming. There's absolutely not a soul that could have somehow logic around this and presented a case that was based on data, trends, cyclical events, and maybe just a little bit of that masculine intuition. No, my friends, that would have been impossible on any other channel but this one. That's right. We've told you for years that this was happening and the time for crypto gaming is fast arriving, if not already here. Now I need to jump in here because I filmed this video a few days ago and it's a banger. Everything I say in here, you absolutely need to know. But there is a segment that I'm adding now to the end of the video because one of the biggest possible partnerships has just manifested for Superverse. And so that part of the video is going to happen at the end. I'll be looking like this, okay? Looking like this. So you'll know what part I'm talking about. But there is a massive massive opportunity to get involved in one of the biggest game launches in the history of the crypto industry and it's exclusive for super holders so make sure you watch to the end of the video destroy that like button and i just want to be clear it may look like you see everything it may look like you can know everything that's going on but really you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, okay? Anything could be going on behind the scenes. Okay, the beginning of this video, we're gonna be talking about the overall context of the market. Some of the bull cases that are manifesting and just, you know how I do it. I like to give you the context of the overall crypto space. But then we're gonna go into altcoin, 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 and I'm gonna give you some of the most in-depth and up-to-date information on the crypto gaming space, helping you understand how to value coins in this space, what's been going on and what we have to look forward to in one of the biggest and most insane wealth transfers of all time. All right, back to the video and I'll see you at the end for this segment. Now, I published a video a few weeks ago showing how we are in this red dip, this final dip before the halving and this yellow line is the halving. This is what happened last time. You can see that pretty much once this final dip happens, it's up only. And this is the total altcoin market caps. This is all the value of all the altcoins, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum. And what you see is that as soon as this final red circle, that final dip is put in, I mean, it's lights out and the market just levitates for months and months and months until everyone's astronomically filthy rich. Again, history doesn't repeat. It might rhyme. So just understand there's no guarantees that anyone's getting rich here. And in fact, that is precisely why there's so much upside is because the risk is crazy. We know that we're all gambling here in this crypto world. And so everything I say here has the chance of going to zero. Zero. We've been knowing this since the beginning and the people who are able to invest and actually make gains here, you deserve a massive tip of the cap because it takes tremendous amounts of courage and risk tolerance to be able to succeed in crypto land. So shout out to you if you've been experiencing any of these gains. Now I'm going to lay out for you some of the macro stuff as I like to do, talk to you about the over overall environment that crypto finds itself in. And then we're going to be talking about the coins that are going to absolutely crush it, specifically in the gaming sector here, which is something that I am obsessed with, something that I've been waiting for and building this entire channel and community around for upwards of seven years here on YouTube. And we're going to be talking about the coins that I think are going to benefit the most from what's happening here in crypto. First and foremost, I will say I was out a lot longer than I wanted to be. And that's because I came down. I was really, really sick. I got the virus last week and it completely destroyed me. Trust me, nobody wanted to hear a video of me talking for 20 minutes. I don't think I could have even talked for 20 minutes, but more to the point, I'm back now and let's get into it. Since I've been gone, Nvidia has hit a $2 trillion market cap, which is literally the entire crypto market cap value. So choose your fighter here. Do you want one company, obviously a great company, or do you want the entirety of crypto? It shows how small, how nascent cryptocurrency is and how much upside there is, how much money there is in the world that is ready to flow into this asset. Now, the only thing giving me pause is that these wonderful people, Bezos, Zuckerberg, Jamie Dimon, are offloading their shares of their company at an excessive rate. The last time we saw this happen, or we saw news articles to this extent, was December 2021. Of course, we do know that Jamie Dimon had telegraphed that he was going to sell these shares last year, so this isn't a full surprise. But again, you don't like to be seeing the world's biggest CEOs and leaders aggressively dumping stocks right as we're reaching this new high, as everyone's predicting recession for years and years now. Again, it's not what we need. We don't need a black swan here, but this is something that should be on your radar. I don't know how you process this information. Again, who really knows what we're doing here in crypto land? Remember, it's all a gamble, but it's important that you keep your eyes open that stuff like this could mean, hey,
hey, maybe the stock market's going to have a little bit of a hiccup here. Maybe there's something that these world leaders know about that we don't know about. I don't know. But again, the mentality here, if you're going to be in crypto land, is that you have to have a thesis. You have to believe in something and you can't get your thesis rocked by the little movements of the market. As my quant here says, I've been asked about what's going to happen in the market. Sirs, unlike other accounts, I fully admit I have no clue. I'm overexposed to the tune of eight figures in altcoins, D out in the wind, backed by nothing, but hope and prayer and poop jokes. I have no answer for ye, no assurance for your terrible investing behavior. Just shit posting and glorious celebration when our irresponsible gambles pay off. May we ride to Valhalla or burn in the funniest crash of all time. Namaste. Again, I said this is my quant. <laughs> Look, the point is that you need to be prepared essentially for annihilation and you need to be prepared to even just take it on the chin if it happens, because otherwise you won't be able to rock with these ups and downs of the market. You have to have a vision of where things are going, just like I have had here with crypto gaming. It's never been a question in my mind that crypto gaming is the future of the crypto industry and that it will grow along with crypto to eclipse trillions of dollars in value. And that means that there's only money to be made, but it's not a straight line. There's a lot of bumps along the road. So if you're able to understand the risk, the reward, and be at peace to some degree with the bumps in the road, you can make it. And I think that that's actually key. I like reading messages like this. It made me laugh when Becker tweeted that because in the end, you need to be really at peace with the fact that shit can hit the fan. And if you really make peace with that, you'll probably do way better in crypto because you won't get scared every two seconds, pulling your money out, making all kinds of impulsive moves. Impulsive moves are not the way to do crypto. You want to build a thesis and stick to it. And I'm going to tell you why my thesis has worked so well well over the last few months and what I see happening after the halving. Now we know an Ethereum ETF is going to happen. You see, here's the guy who won the lawsuit against the SEC, and this is Grayscale. They're the ones who sued the SEC and got the Bitcoin spot ETF approved, and they're going to do the same thing. They're pushing the same exact logic for the Ethereum ETF. So it's a question of when, not if. And we know that. We told you guys that the Ethereum rotation was in full effect and that we were going to start betting on ETH native stuff. And we'll talk about how that stuff has played out to a large degree, but it's still early early in that trade. There's still a lot of money to be made in that trade. We also know that the Bitcoin ETF was not a sell the news event. We know that investment advisors, RIAs, are just starting to recommend these Bitcoin ETFs, that the product has not made its way fully into the financial system yet. And so you got to give these things some time to percolate. However, I wanted to show you this. There's BTC ETF Flowbot. Um, yeah, quite a mouthful. And it tells you the daily flows. And you can see overall, there's been almost $5 billion of inflows into these ETFs. I really like these bots because you can really just get a nice sense, a quick sense of what's coming in, what's coming out. And you can see that some days are negative, but overall, we're making a tremendous amount of headway at taking Bitcoin off the market. Another sign that I think is really important to understand is that retail traders have not yet come back. And that is typically the top signal that the world looks to. They say, oh, it's not if people are making too much money. It's if the little guys are making too much money in the market. That's when the big money pulls the rug and everything goes back and resets because we don't want those little guys to get too powerful, to get too rich, to get too free. That'll upset the sort of balance of society. So what happens is these markets can run, but once retail, once the little guys start really jumping back into the mix, that's when you know that actually it's time for the market to probably cool off. And one of the best indicators of that was a Coinbase app rank, right? There's actually another bot, check it out, Coin App Rank rank bot. And this just, as the name would suggest, tracks how high up in the app store the Coinbase app is. And it tells you every few hours, hey, here's the Coinbase app rank. And it's still in the mid 300s. Remember, this hit number one on the Apple store at the peak of the market in 2021. And it is typically one of the biggest indicators that a top is in. But we actually got the benefit of seeing Coinbase's quarterly numbers. And they came in and they show, yeah, there's been some incremental increase in revenue due to higher trading volumes. But the retail traders are simply not back yet. We have not seen the massive spike in retail traders that typically accompanies Bitcoin and crypto top markets or the tippy top, the explosive blow off top that we would expect. So while people feel like it's almost too good to be true, the institutions are buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin's almost back to its prior all time high. Altcoins are going crazy. The truth is it's still by a lot of metrics very early in the cycle. And that my friends means that there's a lot of money to be made. And the question is, where is that money going to be made? I wanted to pull this up just before I get into it. We have Trump finally on record saying he can live with Bitcoin. He says, I like the dollar, but many people are using it. Bitcoin. And frankly, it's taken a life of its own. You know, probably have to do some regulation, as you know, but many people are embracing it. And more and more, I'm seeing people wanting to pay Bitcoin. And you're seeing something that's very interesting. So I say I can live with it one way or the other. I, I know it was a horrible impression, but the point is we have a presidential candidate saying, hey, look, last time he talked about Bitcoin, it was 
get rid of it, dollar, forget about Bitcoin, you know, make it illegal, I'd shut it down. Now he's saying, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I could live with it. And that, my friends, is a very, very distinct opinion from what we're hearing on the left side of the political environment, which is pretty much full-on hostility. Now, will that get dampened over time? Will the courts have a proper check against the SEC and these other three-letter agencies? I don't know, but it would certainly be nice to see crypto get a more hospitable home one way or another. So I'd say this is yet another instance of progress. Now for the fun part, we've gone through the backdrop, we've gone through the philosophy, and now I want to tell you about the types of coins and why I'm so bullish on gaming. And I'm going to tell you about how I see coins in general and how you should see coins. Now, I've actually made this case many times, but Arthur put out an article called Chief Story Officer, and it pretty much summarizes my thoughts. I've told you guys that the reason why people buy and sell assets has almost nothing to do with what the asset is is it has to do with the story around the asset, what people tell each other. Tesla is changing the world. They're saving the world from gas-powered vehicles. They're re-engineering you know, solar energy, battery tech, and they're going to essentially reduce carbon emissions and save the world. That's the story of Tesla. You know, The story of SpaceX is it's going to save the world by creating interplanetary species, et cetera, et cetera. The story behind NVIDIA is they own the entire AI industry and the future of our cyborg reality will be governed by the NVIDIA chip. Those stories are very, very powerful. And so the question is, what are the stories that we tell each other about crypto? And my friends, understanding how the story is received to the buyer, the future buyer of a crypto asset is very, very critical to understanding if that asset will be successful in the future. So I really like this article. I'll link it here um, or you can search it up. Arthur Hayes, Chief Story Officer. Effectively, what he's explaining here is that each asset has a story. And that story, if you break it down and understand it, you can assess whether you think it's very convincing. Uh, retail derivatives trading volume will shift from centralized exchanges to DEXs, cool. You know, go to DYDX, go to GMX. These are places where you can do the centralized activity on the decentralized uh, service. Here, the launch of ETH staking will spark a huge surge in interest rate swap trading volume across DeFi. Again, this stuff is more technical. Uh, he's more of a financial guy and he talks about more financial concepts. But here you can see these are the stories of certain assets. However, the real exciting stuff is what's going to appeal to the 8 billion users that are not in crypto. And my general gut feel is that most of them will not care that much about these sort of deep techie, you know, rate swap type mechanics. They're going to care about simple stories that are contagious. And my belief is that some of those stories that'll be the most contagious are in gaming. Now, I actually made a little list here so we can check it out. The stories of crypto, uh, Bitcoin, inflation protection, government print money, bad. Bitcoin, 21 million only. That's good. Ethereum, Bitcoin, it's not useful. Ethereum is useful. Good. You can build apps on it. Pretty much. Simple, right? And we get Solana and all these ETH killers. ETH is slow and expensive. ETH bad. Salami fast and cheap. Salami good. DeFi. Crypto has no yield. Make your coins work for you. Yield good. These are the very simplistic stories we tell each other about the narratives in crypto. Now, of course, for me, the most convincing one is crypto has no commercial use case. Gaming is the biggest digital native economy and crypto gaming will eat web to gaming. Crypto gaming good. That to me is the simple narrative narrative. And what I think is really good here is that the convincing part to me about gaming and why I'm so big on gaming and AI, which I'll talk about, it's right below here. The reason why I'm so big on gaming and AI for this cycle is that with gaming, you don't actually need this education layer. You don't need the Elio Trades layer here to be like, hey, this is why this stuff is cool. People can just play the game and be like, wow, I can make money. There's value in this. It can be experienced. And it removes one of the biggest sort of throttles, which is crypto. There's such an education cycle before you really get it. You have to have this aha moment. And that is a bit of a road block. Now, I'm also a believer that there will be sort of two futures for crypto gaming. There will be the speculative future, the asset layer, if you will, where people trade the tokens, the assets and all that stuff. And then there will be the players, the experiential layer, which will be much bigger. But the actual money that comes from the trader, the speculator aspect will be very, very large. So without getting too much into it, I think gaming has one of the best stories because it's so easy to understand. And then finally, AI. Like I said, AI is the future. AI plus crypto equals good. Now, like I said, most of the AI crypto stuff is actually a meme. Like it doesn't have the value that it purports to have and most of it will fail. However, the narrative is so easy to understand and so exciting. AI is the future. What can crypto and blockchain do with AI that all this stuff is going to pump like crazy? And we saw an example of that as soon as we saw Sora AI take off just a few weeks ago. We saw uh, OpenAI release this video program that blew everyone's mind to pieces. And what happened? Every AI protocol, like look at Akash. Akash just went and exploded upwards, right? This was right before the Sora stuff. And then it went up and it added almost $300 million to its market cap, right? You have, um, sorry, let me move this over. You have Akash here and it was 
at you know 780 or whatever and it hit almost a billion right it's a nine 950 so yeah 200 million dollars to its market cap and there were other ai coins that pumped way harder than that again i think akash makes sense because it's the decentralized compute network so it's like okay we know compute resources those are in high demand we know for sure more and more computes needed so if you can make that cheaper a decentralized networks can actually do that kind of stuff they can democratize energy cost so to me something like akash makes a tremendous amount of sense for ai will it be the ultimate winner in AI, I don't know. But again, it doesn't have to be. You just have to understand the reason why people buy these assets is because the story clicks and then there's attention and excitement. Same with anything. There's a gap between what the thing is and what it does and why people buy it. And if you understand the why people buy it, that's how you make money is you get ahead of things that you think people will buy. For me, it's only a matter of time before we have massive hit video games in crypto. So I'm getting ahead and I'm doing this in a lot of ways. I've built kind of my entire brand ethos, identity, community. My professional world is completely tied up in making sure that crypto gaming goes mainstream. So I'm extremely biased in this, but I'm also someone who walks my talk and has been doing this for almost six years. I've been a broken record about crypto gaming. And now it's finally happening where there's real games rolling out. There's real infrastructure. There's real players. And I'm going to explain why this is just the beginning of a massive, massive trend, a massive trend. And I'm going to talk about what's going to happen a little bit after the halving in gaming. But again, remember AI, it's the same reason is that the story is convincing. So understanding how people trade stories, narratives, how they describe assets and why they become powerful, that's going to help you in understanding why gaming is really one of the best fits for consumers to actually onboard to crypto and for these assets to do extraordinarily well over the coming years. All right, let's get back into it. Here's me just a couple of months ago. I talked about all of these projects. As you can see, I'm talking about Immutable X here at about 60 cents. And I wanted to just review it because I have here a sheet where I went through all of these different assets. And as you can see, I have, you know, the blue chips, the mediums, the medium highs or whatever. I made this whole, you know, Technicolor scale. But as you can see, there's a lot of gaming here. There's a whole lot of gaming assets here. And it's because gaming to me is the thing that I'm most obsessed with as far as the step forward for crypto. There's a lot of scaling tech. There's a lot of really cool stuff with modular, uh, with parallel EVM. But it all matters to zero to me compared to the amount of users that are going to come on to crypto through gaming. And the network effect that's going to come from the new gamers coming in is going to be insane. I'm showing you guys the most transparent review of everything I've covered. And philosophically, what I'm trying to impress upon you is that this is my third cycle. So I've seen the growth and death of two cycles, and I'm using that knowledge to try to build not just the smartest investment profile for myself, but also the smartest content funnel and think through it in a way that I don't think anyone else is really doing. Because I understand that the blue chips early on in the cycle will keep accruing astronomical value throughout the cycle. And so my content, while it will include a lot of new assets over the course of the cycle as they come out, it's important to understand the power laws that will happen within each narrative and how astronomically high the top performers in each narrative can grow to be. And so this is one of the things that I'm trying to impress upon you is that yes, Beam and Immutable X, which we talked about now um, almost 10x ago for Beam and uh, 6x ago for Immutable X, these assets have grown tremendously, right? Um, Immutable X is in the billions, uh, Beam is in the billions here. And we were talking about these uh, in, in October when they were much, much lower. Here, I can show you the videos. Here, here you go. Here's Immutable X, here's, here's Merit circle beam wasn't even out yet right it was almost 10x ago right uh we have gala games i talked about uh shrapnel i talked about parallel i talked about ronin i talked about uh, neo tokyo and cedify i talked about all these projects here as you can see and when we go in and look at the values you can see you know cedify it's gone up over 5x right cedify it, it, at one point it was over four bucks here ronin has absolutely been crushing it i need to get an update on ronin because they had pixels come out. Anyway, I'm getting a little scattered here. So I'm going to reorganize and go through these assets one by one. The point is that these assets, although they have moved a lot, this narrative I'm expecting for a gaming token, maybe it's Immutable X, maybe it's Beam, maybe it's another one, maybe it's a super duper other one, who knows, you know, wink, wink. Uh, but there could be an asset in the top 10 market caps when all is said and done this cycle. And that would mean tens of billions of dollars in the top gaming coins. That would mean that the whole market would start repricing under it relatively. Because remember, the story of a gaming token reaching that height is going to influence the story of every other token. And this is what people don't understand, is that every success in gaming 
every big launch, every astronomical new high for Immutable X, for Beam, for market leaders like Ronin, whatever it might be, those don't take away from other projects in gaming. Those pave the way and blaze the trail so that all of them can start being more successful. The hot ball of money will just grow hotter and hotter around gaming. It will attract infinitely more capital to gaming projects, not less. Think of when Axie Infinity exploded in 2021. What happened? Every gaming project went to the moon. So you have to understand that's what's going to happen once we get our first hit game and we still haven't even seen that. What's going to happen after that is going to be mind-blowing. Remember, we still have the having, we still have the bull market, and we still have the hit game inflection point. These are three fundamental reasons why gaming is just getting started. So let's go through this because there's actually been a huge amount of movement. Immutable X, as you can see, it's been cooling off here, but it had a nice run up. I think it hit, yeah, three, 350, 350, not too shabby. Remember, we started covering it at 60 cents. So that's almost, what is that? Almost a 6X there. Immutable is still crushing it. And it is right now the bluest of the blue chips in gaming. And I think it will continue to do so because their win rate of games that are building on their ZK EVM, building on Immutable X Tech has only continued to grow. As you can see here, they have this massive ecosystem. One of the keys here, an important prediction by the founder, Robbie, in his uh, in his model, he says that there will be anywhere between two to five hits this year in 2024. If that happens, I can't even tell you how big the gaming market's going to get. It's going to grow at least 10x, if not more, maybe up to 20x in total size. So that's hundreds of billions of dollars that will come in. Two of our favorite projects, Beam and Immutable, collaborating here on the Sphere Marketplace, which is launching on Immutable X and their ZK EVM. Again, Worth noting, this is all built on Polygon. Another reason I said Polygon was way undervalued and Polygon has been almost up only since we talked about it. We have games like Metalcore coming to Immutable X. Of course, we have a massive partnership here with Superverse, a project I founded. Immutable and Superverse are gonna be working extremely closely. And how does this work? How does this partnership work? Superverse is the mass distribution layer where effectively the token is gonna to be in all the best, the most elite games. And right now, a lot of those elite games are building on Immutable X. So Super will be a token within all of the elite games or the best elite games that the foundation agrees is elite enough to be a part of the Superverse. And Super will effectively be in the best, most elite video games, across the entire space. And that, of course, has to include Immutable X. So why does Immutable want this? Well, Immutable wants this because the community behind Superverse is crazy and it is amazing. And I thank you all for that. And I want you to know it's about to get a lot, a lot crazier. What's cool is no matter where the games are, no matter where they build, Superverse will be there, will be a part of it and pushing the absolute best, most elite games in the space. And the games are opening their economy to Super, the token, essentially making Super one of the most powerful assets in the entire gaming space. And in my opinion, there's no real ceiling on this level of utility because wherever the hit might be, Superverse, it's in its mission to be a part of that hit. It's a beautiful and symbiotic relationship and the partnership with Immutable is really just getting started. So keep your eyes peeled because there are fireworks coming for this partnership with Immutable and super. And check this out. We have Endless Clouds, which is, of course, the Treeverse and Capsule Heroes. Uh, this is Lupify's project. Let me just say Treeverse looks like it'll probably be one of the biggest game releases. It'll follow in the footsteps of Mavia and Pixels. And I'll be showing you what that means in a second, because we've seen some absolutely mind-blowing game releases over the last few weeks. Things that have taken my own expectations for this particular ecosystem and blown them, like stretch them like the corner of the image, okay? Going back to this chart, what I can show you is that there are several games here that are unreleased. And I'm an investor in, in most of these. Just so you know, I've invested in like 95% of the good games in the entire industry. There's only like one or two that I haven't been able to invest into. So just know I'm an investor or an advisor or somehow related to most of these. I'm very biased. Call me Mr. Biased. I am very, very much so financially incentivized and hoping that this thing works out. But just so happens it is working out. OK, so Treeverse, this is one that is huge. It's going to be massive on my radar. It's coming out this year. My Pet Hooligan, we'll talk about that in just a second. Also coming out, uh, Oh Baby Games. I'm actually not an investor in this one, but it looks absolutely S tier. I just want you guys to know I am not biased enough to exclude a game just because I didn't invest. I'm going to tell you about all the good ones, OK? Godzilla, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but it is absolutely the creme de la creme of crypto gaming, okay? Ready Games, absolutely crazy infrastructure. We've talked about them as far back as October. And then Pixelmon and Chronoforge. Again, of these, we have Treeverse, Chronoforge, Pixelmon, some of the biggest game releases coming out all on Immutable X, okay? So that's why Immutable is doing such crazy work. 
Effectively, the market is pricing in the idea that whenever there's a big hit, that it's probably gonna be on immutable. Nobody can tell you exactly what the big, big hits are gonna be, but the market's saying, hey, look, we have a, a belief here that immutable might be the place where this hit resides. My point is that immutable X is a leader here, but it's not just a leader right now. It's not just because it made this move from 60 cents or from 40 cents. This is going to be a massive play throughout the cycle, and there's not really a ceiling on where this could go, because if many hit games are on immutable X, there's no paradigm, there's no analog for this. We don't have anything to compare it to. And with Bitcoin at 150K, we're gonna see altcoins higher than they've ever been. So if you have the first instance of consumer adoption, true consumer adoption, pushing the bounds of what we thought was possible to the tunes of tens of millions of real users using real products that are gonna be sticky, not just here to speculate. Well, what could Immutable X be worth? There's not really an analog for it, right? And I'm not saying it's only Immutable X, it could be Ronin, it could be Gala, it could be Immutable X, it could be Beam. It could be any number of amazing coins, but there's not really a limit on what they could be worth because in that world, we'll see a whole new level of validation for crypto. And that's what you have to understand is that we haven't even explored this new world yet. And that's what the market is saying is that, hey, we think Immutable X could really be that front runner right now. But Beam is also killing it. One of the things that I think people need to understand is that Beam is a beast when it comes to their treasury. Their treasury went from about 94 million. It's actually close to 150 million. Last time I checked, it's just been explosive upwards. And a lot of the treasury profits actually, the way their tokenomics are set up, they actually buy Beam back. So Beam, I don't know, it's currently crushed it. I mean, it's crushed it since we first started covering it uh, back in early October or late October, but I think it's still early. I think it could still do a tremendous amount of growth from here. And my point is, even though these blue chips, the best projects have continued to grow, you know, really outperform, this is before the Bitcoin halving. These projects could easily still 10X, maybe even some of them 20X or more, even the good ones still here after the halving. Now, I'm not saying that Beam and Immutable X are gonna 20X, but I'm saying that the best projects in the space could still have a tremendous amount of room to grow, even though they've done well this far. And my point is that it would be foolish to just start throwing caution to the wind and buying junk this early in the cycle when the reality is that the best projects still have a lot of performance ahead of them. Now, if Beam was here at 20 cents, you know, if Beam's here at 20 cents, I'm not gonna tell you that thing's probably gonna 10X. That would be that would be probably pretty crazy. But could it still have nice moves up from here with all that has going on, the marketplace on Immutable X, all of the games that are deploying on its subnet, all of its technology, its massive treasury? Yeah, Beam definitely going to keep growing with the space. It's got a lot to look forward to. They just had a new game, Forgotten Playland, drop. Again, they keep having good events, and that's what you want to see. You want to see a project with a tremendous amount of news, with a tremendous amount of exposure to different quality game assets, so that no matter which game succeeds, your overall infrastructure bucket can really benefit from it. And obviously, there's a project in this space that has been doing that very, very well, one very near and dear to my heart, that is all about partnering with the most elite projects in the space. And again, I think that it's a huge, huge advantage. We'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so now for some of the bigger updates within gaming, because we've had two launches over the past few weeks that have actually changed my perception of where we are in gaming. These launches have been so successful that I didn't think we'd see game launches that were this good. I mean, speaking from market reception standpoint, until much later in the cycle. This resembles to me the prior all-time high. Now we gotta first talk about pixels. This came out, and by the way, I would let this stuff chill out for a little bit because we've never seen a launch this high profile in gaming. You see, Pixels launched at a two and a half billion dollar FDV. I mean, it was as high as three billion dollars fully diluted valuation. And that is for the first moment of this token's life. And it had massive volume here on Binance. You could see it started off over a billion dollars in volume. Now, Pixels is doing this because they have such a huge amount of active wallets and they're in many ways trying to be the next Axie. Axie Infinity found product market fit with Southeast Asia, essentially grinding the game to make money. And that feels a little bit like what Pixels Online has going on, with they have over 300,000 daily active wallets actively coming in and playing the game, and the market saying, hey, look, we can see the product market fit here. Now, are these all active users? Are there plenty of people farming it on many different accounts? Yeah, there's probably a lot of people farming it on many, many different accounts. But regardless, the numbers are the numbers. You're seeing massive amounts of users, massive amounts of interactions with this application, and the market likes that. The market is saying, hey, we're valid validating that. And Pixel's launching here and holding 
uh, it's got 400 mil, you know, circulating market cap, but a two and a half billion dollar FDV is monstrous, monstrous for a brand new project. So you want to be paying very close attention to these massive airdrops from projects like Pixels. And you need to understand the impact and the magnitude on the market that it has when a project launches at a multi-bill FDV, a single game, okay? Of course, to be clear, it's very bullish what happened with Pixels for the Ronin network. You can see the Ronin network for the last year. You can see since uh, October, right? When I started putting out my gaming content, just Ronin has been absolutely monstrous. We covered it here at, what was it, 40 cents or something like that? Yeah, it was like 40 something cents. So yeah, almost, um, I don't know, 8x or so, what did it hit up 340s? Yeah, almost to 10x, right? From where we covered it. Absolutely beast mode, right? And so Ronin is gonna be the network that Pixels is is based on. So of course, anything Pixels does that's successful will benefit Ronin. That's why these infrastructure plays are such a good deal because you get a benefit by anything that happens on the network, right? Whether Pixels lives or dies, Ronin can continue to climb. Now it's time to talk about a project. Again, I am an investor in it and I'm very, very happy to see that it performed. But you need to understand, this was one of the most astronomical performances I've seen out of a token, specifically a gaming token, but any token in recent memory. We see here, Heroes of Mavia. Now I will say, this project came early to the Neo Tokyo launch pad. Citizens have invested in it. I think at 40 cents was their price that they invested in it. So if you were in Neo Tokyo, you could have gotten into this project very early at 40 cents. Uh, it's a long vest, but still, Heroes of Mavia, it launched launched at uh, about a dollar 80 and if you look at a market cap that has it down here at about a 60 million dollar market cap not too shabby pretty solid but it literally rips from there over 5x all the way to a 314 million dollar market cap over ten dollars ten dollars and 28 cents this makes it one of the biggest ripping face melting launches that i've seen in quite some time and the volume is insane here look they had over a hundred million dollars in volume and it stayed consistent for days and days and so what happened what was so special about heroes of mavia and what can we ascertain from this launch about what we can look forward to for crypto gaming well actually tell you here because i've actually been playing uh heroes of mavia for quite some time i actually love this game uh it's the thing i do at night when i'm bored i've just been playing it it's a casual game it's like a clash of clans style game if you've ever played clash of clans and what i realized is that clash of clans was a big enough concept that hit and meant enough to enough people here in crypto land that people instantly clicked and saw the value of having the connection between a clash of clan style game and the blockchain and this game, to me, is just as fun as Clash of Clans. And I actually didn't play a lot of Clash of Clans, so to me, it's a lot more fun than Clash of Clans. Mind you, I'm an investor, so seeing these numbers are absolutely stunning. I do have a lot of unlocked tokens, and I have not sold any yet, because I'm just a big believer that if this gaming thing is going to happen at this level, that I just want to see what happens with things like Heroes of Mavia. I'm a big bull on fully built games, teams that deliver a fully shipped product before they launch their game, where seeing a lot more of that. Whereas in the last cycle, a lot of fundraising needed to be done. So people were fundraising through NFTs and other stuff. And granted, Mavia did do an NFT sale back in the day. But the cool thing here is that Mavia's token now shows the potential for fully baked, fun games that people understand and want to play. And if I'm going to be honest, the chart here for Mavia looks pretty good. Like I wouldn't have bought it. You know, I didn't want to talk about it while it was peaking up here at, at all time highs, but it looks like it may be cooling off. And of course, 680 down from you know, $10 and 15 cents, you're looking at a, what is this? A 35% discount. That's pretty solid, right? That's pretty solid. I don't know. These new launches are so dramatic and dynamic. It's hard to say, but at some point, this Mavia is going to become a screaming buy in my personal opinion. And the cool part is you literally can see and play the whole game right on your phone right now. There's nothing behind the curtain and you should go play the game. I find myself every time I get bored, opening the game, playing it, trying to grow my base, trying to attack and, and raid some bases. Dare I say, I'm pretty addicted to the game. It's really, really fun. I couldn't help but feel like when I was playing Heroes of Mavia and watching the charts that I was walking through a gateway into a new dimension of crypto gaming. Like this is the future that we've been waiting for for quite some time. So what I can say is that I'm a very proud investor, but I'm also a proud participant in Web3 gaming because I can tell that Heroes of Mavia is setting that new standard for what a crypto game can be. A truly fun experience, really well thought through tokenomics, and a fully built project Project that once it launches can just totally rip. And there's no skeleton. There's nothing behind the curtain. There's nothing to reveal. Everyone knows exactly what it is. And I think that was so refreshing for people that they just dug into this project with both hands. So that's why I think Heroes of Mavia had such an astronomical lights out launch. And we can see here it's down 35%. You can see it hit 
hit over a $2 billion market cap. So you want to be sizing these things up. Like if another project comes out and it, you know, maybe is a little lower, it's at a maybe a half a billion dollar market cap. Well, maybe that means that it has some upside there, right? If you're looking at Heroes of Mavia as a prototype, you can see Pixels at a two and a half billion dollar market cap after it settled down. Heroes of Mavia, it hit a little over $2 billion market cap FDV. And so look at these data points and you can start analyzing future token launches. Oh, maybe this one could have the same run as Mavia and it's going to open the door for successful launch after successful launch as long as the pieces are there. Fully built game, fun experience, the community can easily digest the type of game and they have users downloading and playing the game. The tokens are going to freaking rip in this climate. That's what I can say. And yes, another token that we gave you very, very early on, Echelon Prime. Let's check the sheet. We gave you Prime here at $3.13. It hit as high as almost 15 bucks here. So almost a 5x uh, over where we gave it to you. Again, Echelon Prime, great game. What can I say? But these actually built games that people are experiencing and the dev teams continue to grow the experience, it's a recipe for success. So anyone who ever doubted this crypto gaming narrative, the evidence is right in front of you. It's staring you in the eye. And to me, the stories that we tell each other about assets around crypto gaming, they make total sense. And once we see the users pouring in, the asset layer here, you're getting ahead of what could be hundreds of millions of speculators, of buyers, of players. The amount of coordination that you're front running by getting into crypto gaming, in my opinion, is tremendous. Obviously, there's risk in every crypto asset. There's risk that who knows, Jeff Bezos is going to is gonna sell all his Amazon stock tomorrow and then we're going to have a new recession. I don't know what the risks are, but I can tell you that if this cycle plays out like any other cycle, crypto gaming is going to be the easiest place to front run all this stuff and getting into products that have a diversified uh, sort of attachment to many elite projects. It's easy money, in my opinion. It's easy easy money. And that's why I've been so dead set on this thesis above all else for years now. What's up, guys? I'm back. And that means that it's time to discuss an absolutely mind-blowing partnership for the Superverse. And that's because when I told you that Super was going to be partnering with the absolute best and most elite video games in the entire crypto industry, I meant it. And today's partnership announcement is proof that this is a project unlike any other. Because Superverse is partnering with Off The Grid, which is a next-gen cyberpunk free-to-play battle royale. But forget about all that. What they describe here cannot even possibly do this game justice because this is the next generation of crypto-enabled games that we have been waiting for for literally years and in my opinion is the most anticipated game release of the entire year. What you're about to see here is Dr. Disrespect playing this game and what he says about the game actually even changed my own opinion as if I couldn't be more bullish on this game. This blew my mind what he said in just a few seconds of playing this game. Listen to this. We're in a location called Little Kiev right now and the visuals are amazing. The best I've ever seen in a battle royale and it's still in development. We'll try to sneak up on these guys. Let me go to the right. Oh wait, there's enemies in front of us. Tonight. I'm going far right. Two guys in the middle of the street. Yeah. Easy, one, two. We we'll try to get above them. All right, we're above. All right, so let's break this down. One of the leading streamers specifically for the first person shooter and third person shooter battle royale genre, Dr. Disrespect has said that not only is this game a good looking game, oh, it looks good, it's a crypto game. No, no, no. He said that these are the best visuals he's ever seen in any battle royale game. He's not just saying this is good for a crypto game. He's saying this is the best visuals he's ever seen. And this was months ago. So this has only continued to improve. Now bear with me because they're partnering with Superverse and I'm gonna talk about in just a few minutes how you, if you're holding any super tokens at all, and yes, you still have time to get some, you'll be able to claim ridiculously exclusive loot in this game, which could very well have over 100 million players this year. This game has the potential to go totally mainstream. And let me tell you a little bit about why. The world of off the grid comes from the creative genius Neil Blomkamp. If you don't know Neil Blomkamp, he's the guy who created District 9 and Chappie, two of the coolest movies I think I've ever seen in my life. Honestly, shout out to District 9 and Chappie. But he wasn't just like, oh, we'll 
create a cool video game. They actually created an entire cinematic universe for this game. What you see behind me is actually a cinematic from the game, and it is ridiculously photorealistic. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but I suggest you go and watch these because these were like entire experiences, entire movies, and they created multiple of these just to help promote the in-game world that they've created here. Like I said, it's already getting love from some of the biggest streamers in the world, and your eyes do not deceive you. Yes, it's coming to PC, but it's also coming to PS5 and Xbox. That is a whole nother level for a Web3 game to get a full console release. All right, so now you get it. This is one of the biggest games to have ever hit the blockchain. With hundreds of people working for over five years on this game, this could be Web3's mainstream moment. And if you're holding any super tokens at all, you'll get the chance to farm some of the most exclusive loot in this entire game universe before the game even launches. So let me explain to you how you can claim some absolutely ridiculous loot in this game and some of the rarest NFTs in the entire ecosystem that actually validate transactions on the game's custom Avalanche subnet blockchain. Now, before the game goes live so that there's a robust item economy, the second the game is released, the Gunzilla team, the team behind this game, are letting people farm items in off the grid in this companion app. They released not just one game, but actually two games. And one of them is a companion game that you can play on your phone. Now, that game is called Technicore, which if you're a super holder, you'll get access to all kinds of exclusive items and some of the rarest loot in this entire ecosystem. Check this out. Starting March 4th through March 11th, there's going to be an event in Technicore where super token and NFT holders will be able to download and play Technicore to earn a hex cube, which is containing one of five exclusive NFT gear items, including a chance at an ultra rare superverse weapon. I know you're thinking, oh, just a weapon. No, no, no. Look at the video that the Godzilla team put together for this superverse weapon. There's actually two guns that you could end up earning, and one of them is ultra rare in the game. You can see the full video on the Twitter announcement, which please go to the Twitter announcement, hype up that Twitter announcement, which just dropped, because of course we want to bring as much attention to these partnerships as we can, the most elite partnerships in the crypto gaming space that absolutely no other community can pull off. But back to the fun stuff, you'll get one of these five items just for showing up. So in order to do this, you need to go to the superverse.co website. Please ensure you're on the official Superverse website. There are all kinds of scammers and imitators trying to get you to click on fake versions of the Superverse Twitter, of the Superverse website. So make sure you're at the superverse.co slash partners slash off the grid URL. Please ensure it's authentic and you'll be able to connect your wallet holding super tokens and claim an exclusive code for Technicore. Now you're going to download the Technicore app, play one game, and it'll give you the chance to put in a code. And once you input the code, you'll immediately earn one loot crate that could have some seriously rare loot in it. Literally, this will take you two minutes to get in and potentially earn some serious loot. But if you thought that was it, you're sorely mistaken. For 60 days, starting March 4th, super holders will get their own leaderboard in Technicore, and the top 30 players will receive a Gunzilla Validator NFT. Now, these NFTs are some of the rarest in the entire space, and they actually validate transactions. Whenever people want to decode their hex boxes, meaning open item boxes, they need to actually pay the validator nodes with the native tokens in order to decode those hexes, in order to open their loot boxes. It's honestly an incredibly sick way that they've used blockchain technology and NFTs to work seamlessly within a AAA video game environment. So when I tell you that these are extremely rare and very much worth your time to be hunting down and trying to win these on the leaderboard, I'm not joking. This is absolutely massive. Now, it's worth highlighting that for the week of March 4th through March 11th, this will be an exclusive period for super holders to play the game. So if you don't have any super tokens, I mean, first of all, what are you thinking at this point? If you're watching this channel, if you're a fan of crypto gaming or crypto in general, if you haven't been following the story of where things have come from in this short period of time and where they're obviously going, you need to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what are you doing? I've been as clear as day that this project is my full focus and just know you ain't seen nothing yet. So if you want to participate in this, make sure you grab yourself some super tokens in the next few days, go over to the official Superverse website and claim your code to start farming some absolutely ridiculous loot that everyone in this cyberpunk off the grid world will literally want to kill you for. All right, you get it. Superverse has just partnered with the sickest game in the world. Strap in. It's going to be an absolutely nuts year for the Superverse community. And shout out to all my Super Saiyans out there. Trust me, we're just getting started. So now I want to talk to you about a huge announcement and one of the 
first major, major announcements from Superverse. Superverse has a mission to integrate with the leading, most elite AAA games, but also the most advanced and elite projects, right? And so My Pet Hooligan, if you're not familiar with them, they're actually an LA-based studio. I know these guys. And they are building a sleeping giant of a project. And so it was very strategic and very intentional that we made them one of the first announcements and first partners for the Superverse project. And what does this all mean? First, I'm going to play you the trailer, and then I'm going to tell you what this project means and why I'm so excited about everything they have going on. Okay, so first of all, the uh, minds behind My Pet Hooligan are actually OGs from Pixar. They are some of the most pioneering animators in our lifetimes, and they are very talented. Obviously, you can tell the My Pet Hooligan, Hooli, is one of the best done characters in the whole space. And they've got this crazy mocap recording space at their studio here in LA that I had the privilege of visiting them and checking it out. But beyond that, not only did they make some really cool animations for their game, and in my opinion, built what is one of the highest quality open world video games within cryptocurrency, but they've also built an incredible amount of AI tech. This is where it gets really, really fascinating, is that they've actually built this super deep stack of interactive characters that leverage AI, and they're building a serious business. I'm not gonna actually say, because I can't say the clients they have, but they have real, huge, massive national corporations that are tapping in and wanting to leverage their AI character tech for interacting with customers. So when you look at mass adoption and you think, okay, how does mass adoption work? How do you attach cryptocurrencies and protocols to products and services that the world needs? Well, gaming is a great example, but AI is another crazy example. And I think these guys are truly in a league of their own in pushing the boundaries of where this consumer facing AI animation tech is converging. What I can say is that their ecosystem token, the carrot coin, looks like it's going to be an absolute destructive monster here. Like, I am absolutely so excited for what they have cooking here. Uh, so check out their intro videos, follow Carrot Coin here. And now I want to talk for a second about how this all works, because what they're doing is they're opening up their next gen ecosystem so that people can use super tokens within it, meaning that super token is going to get utility and access throughout their amazing ecosystem. And they're doing this because this, what we've created here, is one of the biggest networks that's ever existed for Web3 gaming. And they've created some of the coolest tech. And so by opening their ecosystem to us, both projects benefit symbiotically, allowing for Super to grow with insane new utility, but also for people to truly discover the magic and the genius behind the Carrot Coin ecosystem. So these are the types of partnerships that are going to really push the space forward. Remember, I told you that I've been obsessed with how we can maximize the chances of mainstream adoption. And this is the first stone that's being thrown in that direction. So when we look at Heroes of Mafia, which eclipsed $2 billion in FDV. I don't think it's done. When we look at Pixels, that is sitting at a $2.5 billion FDV. Games that are not only fully built, super immersive and fun, that are going to be rolled out to millions of users before the token goes live, but also, in this case, some really next-gen AI tech that's truly in demand from massive brands as customers. This is the kind of monstrous combination of my two favorite narratives, gaming and AI, real-world use case. I couldn't help but be more excited that this is super versus his first official partner. What I can say is that you need to be firmly focused on the carrot coin because it's going to be a monster. Again, there's so much going on in crypto land. There's L2 season, there's ETH season, there's Solana stuff, there's meme coins, there's NFTs, there's all these different ways to make money in crypto. But I've chosen to focus squarely on gaming 
because I know that this is where I see the most amount of users triangulating and I can keep my life very simple by just being an expert in this. And so in keeping with that theme, I just wanna stay on track and keep delivering to you the best quality content I can give you. And that means that I won't be coming out with content all the time. In fact, you might've noticed that I'm coming out with videos maybe once a week, maybe twice a week, but I'm trying to really make sure that every single video is delivered with extreme precision, with extreme focus on the quality of information and that there's not a single project that I cover that's not elite, that's not worthy of the spotlight here for your eyes and specifically in case you are so bold as to buy it for your wallet. I take it very, very seriously. Even though I can't control the variables and I can't predict the future, I wanna make sure that everything I talk about here is the absolute highest quality of project. So if you appreciate that, destroy that like button, share these videos, and don't be scared to hop in, try out the games we're talking about here, and see if you feel like these projects are as high quality as I've put them out to be, because the market has shown that my thesis is accurate, and I wanna keep writing it and developing it with you in front of you so that you can benefit from it. I wanted to take a second and shout out today's sponsor, Big Time. Of course, we've talked about Big time before, but they wanted to sponsor the channel and show their gameplay. This is definitely one of the leading MMORPGs in the space, and they have a ton under the hood. Well, there you have it, MMORPG Big Time. Shout out to them for sponsoring this video, and we'll see a lot more of them. I'll co I'll be covering them organically, but they want to sponsor the episode, so shout out to them for sponsoring the episode. And uh, again, if you like the gameplay, make sure to go download and check it out. There's a lot under the hood, a lot of cool ways that you can benefit from that ecosystem. Stuff we'll be talking about a lot more in depth on future episodes. Going back into the sheet here, I just wanted to show you, you know, th the performance has been crazy. Like, I thought that these numbers would be a lot further along in the cycle, but as you can see, almost every everything is up several X's, right? At the very least, if not more. And in my opinion, it's only starting to ramp up. So if you're looking to start sizing out a niche or if you feel like this market has kind of flown you by, I think your life is most simplified by having a combination of sort of layer one chains and some AI, but really just focusing on gaming because there's gonna be so many launches coming now that Mavia and Pixels had such incredible launches. Well, those games are going to inspire massive launches from other other games. And so when all the pieces are there for the formula, you can expect fireworks. And that's just going to keep attracting this hot ball of money to gaming. And I think it's going to create so much interest and excitement that it's only a matter of time before we get that hit. And when we get that gaming hit, that changes everything, absolutely everything. And in my opinion, I don't know, you could see hundreds of millions of users overnight flooding into the gaming crypto ecosystem. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. This is the exact thesis playing out. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.